we had a patient coming two nights ago with two of the worst complications. Uh, there's something called diabetic ketoacidosis, where your sugar goes up really high. There's a lot of acid ketones in your body. It puts you into into shock, and then you also had a heart attack at the same time, a massive heart attack. So you had both of them, and uh, somehow we uh, came through still still with us. Uh, but yes, those are some of the complications. But the common complications you need to uh, it, it damages your eyes, it damages your kidneys, gives you kidney failure, it uh, affects your heart, gives you heart attacks, heart failure. Uh, it affects your brain, strokes, it affects every system in the body. Most people you see with one leg or two legs amputated is a complication of diabetes. So untreated diabetes is a mean disease. It has, it, it, it will ravage your body. But I don't think it is just the job of the uh, government. It's all of us, the medical societies, churches, mosques, civil organizations, social media, they use, uh, what do they call these guys now? Is it content people? I don't know, there's something you guys do on social media that uh, has a lot of followers. Those guys should all help in education, but people don't like to listen to things like that. It doesn't bring in viewers and all that stuff. So, but it's important all of us take part in educating as many people as we can, not just leave it to the government. Public outcry is growing as more Nigerians struggle with the burden of diabetes. Civil service groups and healthcare advocates are calling on the government to take immediate action to subsidize essential medications, improve healthcare facilities, and invest in public health campaigns to educate the population about diabetes prevention and management. The role of the government is to create policies that ensures that public health in Nigeria is in a good place. Um, I know that the Ministry of Health um, developed a national plan uh, for the control of non-communicable diseases, which of course diabetes is a non-communicable disease. Um, so we have all of these great policies that exist. However, implementation has been far from far from what's expected um, with regards to, you know, just preventive education, screenings to ensure that people are aware of their sugar levels and people are aware of the risk factors of some of their, of some, you know, foods um, such as sugary drinks and how that can contribute to the rise in diabetes in Nigeria. So with regards to policies, we do have some policies that have been developed to curb the rise of diabetes or just, you know, prevent it from even happening in the first place. However, when it comes to implementation of these policies and it being implemented effectively, um, that has been um, lacking on the government side. Gatefield has been advocating for sugary drinks for a couple of years now. Um, our advocacy led to the introduction of Nigeria's sugary drinks tax. And I think the rationale is essentially the health risks that I've mentioned earlier on that are associated with consuming sugary drinks. So sugary drinks or minerals or carbonated drinks as we call them here in Nigeria are loaded with tons of sugar that offer no nutritional value whatsoever. And when these drinks are consumed, um, it essentially goes straight into your bloodstreams. And there is low level of awareness um, when it relates to how really harmful these drinks are, especially when it's being consumed on a regular basis. And sugary drinks are quite affordable here in Nigeria, as well as in other low and middle income countries, which is a target by the industry because we are targeted because, you know, we're, we're seen as poor and we can afford all of these drinks. But on the flip side, um, 
high consumption of sugary drinks. Nigeria was once the fourth highest consumers of sugary drinks. And high consumption of these drinks also leads to high onset of non-communicable diseases like diabetes. So I think for us, the health risk and the health narrative comes first for us at Gatefield. That is the number one rationale for you know going on this, embarking on this advocacy journey. And secondly, um, you know, the revenue generation potential of a fiscal policy like a sugary drinks tax can also do a lot for Nigeria's, you know, health systems. When it comes to other examples and case studies, um, I always like referencing South Africa. So South Africa um, introduced um, the sugary drinks tax through um, a policy called the health promotion levy. And essentially revenue from this tax is being used for health promotion. And I think sometimes we are not aware on how health promotion really speaks to the prevention is better than cure because if you are aware of the risk, you are aware of how bad these um, products are for you, then the chances of you reducing your consumption are quite high. Um, and that's something that South Africa has been doing and it has led to a lot of positive public health outcomes, including reduction and including um, revenue generation for the country as well. So I think South Africa is a very good case study that Nigeria can learn from and should learn from. The future of Nigeria's fight against diabetes depends on action today. Without significant improvements in healthcare access and affordability, the number of those affected will continue to rise with devastating consequences for families and communities. It starts from childhood. You can't bring your child up on cornflakes, uh, what are those sweet cereals and, and things, and then expect them to be able to stop when they become adults. It's very difficult. Donuts, all those nice things are that we give our kids. Should, from an early age, start to make them eat healthy. Despite the challenges, there is hope. Community-based initiatives, local NGOs, and government programs are striving to make a difference. These efforts emphasize prevention, education, and early detection, crucial components in the fight against diabetes. A notable organization working towards this goal is the Olushegun Obasanjo Foundation, established by former Nigerian president Olushegun Obasanjo. Having managed diabetes himself for over three decades, Obasanjo is deeply committed to raising awareness and improving care for others facing the same struggle. I say to people that I've uh, been diagnosed uh, diabetic you know, more than 50 years ago, um, it will surprise them how I'm still living or why I'm still living. Mm. Um, uh, so that's as long ago as I've been diagnosed. Uh, as I said, initially, I didn't pay attention to it. And then my frequent urination started getting worse and worse. And that was when I realized that I had a problem. I remember I had to give a lecture uh, somewhere else, and then while giving the lecture. I was so pressed that I have to go leave the lecture and go and urinate. And then I knew that uh, I had a problem. So from then on, of course, I took it seriously. Um, and um, I watch what I eat. Um, I used to be, at one time, 104 and weight kg, 103, 104. Um, then I came down to 93, 83. Um, maybe my being in prison too helped because when I was in prison, uh, because of uh, watching my 
uh, doing exercise and watching my food, I was able to maintain a good figure. And I believe that if you are diabetic, you have to watch your weight. You have to watch what you eat and how you eat. Not only what you eat, what you eat and how you eat. Uh, you have to exercise. Mm. Um, and, and that is very, very important. Do you still exercise? I, I had, a, I had a, few, a few friends, about five or six of them, who are diabetic. They never did any exercise. They never they ate. Um, how, do I, how do I put it? Uh, recklessly. <laughs> and um, uh, when you see yourself bloating out, mm. uh, then you know that you are not uh, doing what you should do. Now, I, 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 I still play squash. And squash is a, a vigorous game. If you, uh, you have a game of uh, squash for one hour. Um, you, you have enough exercise. I play three times a week, Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. When I'm, when I'm around and when there's a squash court and a partner to play with, I take strictly to my medication. I brought for medical checkup. Uh, um, I was told that uh, something, chemistry that I have, uh, and my doctor said, even a bit naughty, look at the thing. I said, well, look, I've been uh, using honey to uh, uh, drink my akamu. Uh, Ugi, and he said you have to stop. But I, what I say to people um, uh, is what I uh, coined as uh, dreams. I'd say call it dreams with plus C. And D is diet. We've talked about that. Not even if you don't. Uh, have diabetes. Uh, as you grow old, you must watch what you consume in terms of food, in terms of drink, uh, even in terms of what you listen to, because it's part of consumption. <laughs> and so, exercise, uh, diet, rest, exercise, and what I said earlier on medical don't play with your medical uh, once you get to an age of about 65 well you must do regular medical checkup mm. um, and listen to your uh, uh, doctors um, some people will say oh if you have to listen to doctors you won't enjoy life well if you don't listen to doctors, do you, you want to die? All the drugs that are imported have gone up as a result of inflation. And um, I, I, I don't know when you say, well, nothing to worry about. Those who die because they cannot afford the cost of medication because the price has gone up. Yeah. Well, and you don't have to worry about them. If you don't worry about them, those who lose uh, loved ones through death because they could not afford medication uh, because of our cost, well, they know that uh, they know what it means that they have lost uh, loved ones. I'm, I'm scared that I will not be able to afford uh, medication in the nearest future because the rate at which things are going, I'll have to make a choice between doing, having to take my drugs or having to just do the things I need to do for myself. It's, it's, it's getting to a point to where it's a trade-off because the moment it crosses 200, 
if I'm using 200k to buy drugs, what else am I going to use to live? So it's getting to that point where I have to make that decision. Do I want, really want to even stay alive? Is life that worth living that I want to take? I want to do that.